Well, today's topic is all about writers, journals, and notebooks. If you've got five minutes, I've got five tips to help you make better use of your own journals and notebooks. Well, you have journals, don't you? You have notebooks of some sort, at least you have one, because writers have journals. Writer Madeline Lingle once wrote, you want to write? You need to keep an honest, unpublishable journal that nobody reads, nobody but you. And this is where we start. We're talking about an unpublishable journal. No pressures, just a place for you to write. Now your notebooks and journals will serve a number of purposes for you and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in my tips. But one of the services that they do not provide for you is to provide you with publishable material. Now just to be clear here, I'm talking about handwritten journals. I'm not talking about computer-based journals. We all use them from time to time. I know I do. I use OneNote notebooks on the computer when I'm writing a major project. But I also use written journals, handwritten journals and notebooks a lot. As far as I'm concerned, a writer needs to take pen to paper once in a while because there's a different kind of process that's involved when your hand is moving across a page. Okay, now let's get to my five tips. Tip number one, choose your writing implement carefully. I know this sounds a little bit crazy, but just think about this. If you're using a pen that kind of scratches across the pages, it interferes with your thought process. It interferes with the movement of your hand across the page. And it's going to interfere with the usefulness of your notebook because you're going to be annoyed most of the time. So find something that you can grip well, that you like, that feels nice, and that feels really good as you move it across the page. And buy a couple of them because you're going to use it a lot throughout your writing career. Tip number two, use it every day or almost every day anyway. This is one of these kinds of things that has to become some kind of a habit. If you have difficulty figuring out what you should be writing about, because you can write about anything, you can jot down things that you hear, things that you think about, things that you read somewhere else, words that you like, anything that you're interested in, just write it down. But if you're having trouble, you might do what the writing guru Natalie Goldberg suggests in her book, Writing Down the Bones, when she calls writing practice, she talks about moving your hand across the page for 10 minutes and never stopping it, starting with the words, I remember, and keep on writing. Every time your hand stops, write the words, I remember, down again, and keep going. And it actually works. Tip number three, turn it into your artistic ritual. It's interesting when you think about artists, most of them have some kinds of rituals that they use as they get started in their work at the beginning of a day. I've mentioned Twyla Tharp's book before, The Creative Habit, and in that book, which I highly recommend yet again, the, she talks a little bit about writer's rituals, and she tells the story of composer Igor Stravinsky, who used to sit down at his piano every morning and play a Bach fugue before he would sit down and begin composing his music. Writer Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way some years ago, also had a similar kind of thing when she suggested that writers do what she called morning pages. So that every morning before you begin your work on whatever project you're working on, or maybe it's in the evening if you're working in the evening, but before you actually start working on that project, you would sit down and this becomes your ritual that you do it every time and it gets you kind of geared up and moves you from your everyday life into your writing life. Tip number four, have more than one. I have lots of notebooks. I particularly like those little moleskin notebooks that come in a variety of different sizes and for various purposes. I just love them. I carry them with me when I travel in particular, but I also have a notebook of one sort or another for every single project. I talked a little bit about this before when we talked about where to keep your depository of research materials. And one of the ways of doing that is to have a specific notebook for a specific project. 
But more than that, I also have a tiny little blue notebook where I jot things down if I think of little phrases or I overhear things. I also have a great big one, which I call my big idea book. Every once in a while, everybody who writes gets these great ideas and they need to write them down somewhere. They're not the sorts of things that you're going to begin working on at any given point in time, but you just write them down and you put them away and you go back to them later on, which brings me to my last tip. Tip number five is review your journals regularly. When you think about it, these are the repositories for your thoughts, your ideas, your feelings even. And when you go back to them, you're, it's like opening a treasure chest and finding a treasure trove of material that gets you thinking about things in different ways, that, that fires your imagination, that might even have the kernel of a new project in there. So make sure that you don't just put them away, but review them regularly. Now, there is a question that might be in your mind. Is your journal or notebook your diary? The short answer is no, it's not. It's not meant to be your diary. You might have a diary where you keep uh, an ongoing daily uh, roster of what you did that day. Some people put what they ate, what the weather was like, how they were feeling that day, a personal diary. This isn't really the same thing. You might use a diary at some point as the basis for a memoir that you might be writing in the future, but for the most part, I'm talking about the use of a writer's journal for different kinds of purposes. Bottom line though, I wanna remind you again, is never publish your notebook or your journal. So I need to go and make a few notes now. Maybe you need to go and make a few notes too. Talk to you next time. Subscribe to Write, Fix, Repeat. And maybe I can help you improve your writing knowledge and skills. Five tips at a time.